Hey, hi, howdy, and hello, friends. Wickedy here, and I have been having an absolute blast with the 1.5 update released on PC with the console and mobile update coming soon. So while I've been discovering everything that I can involved in this update, I've been working on making videos and guides for all y'all too. Be sure to subscribe and get notified for when the next one comes out. All right, so before we get into this video, I gotta be honest with you. There be spoilers up ahead, not just a little, like a lot. So just giving you a quick heads up and you have been warned. This update is what you would call an end game update for sure. And today we're going over a new end game dungeon and the new amazing forging and enchanting system we got going on as well. Oh yes, you did hear that right. You're gonna be enchanting your weapons and tools so you can become a straight up monster slaying boss. <laughs> first, before we can get to making the weapon of your dreams, we have to get you there first. So once you help Willy repair his boat, you will be right on your way. After you reach the new islands, you can head right up to the dungeon without even exploring anything else all the way north and you'll be met face to face with a raging volcano. <laughs> Word to the wise, be sure to have your trusty watering can handy as this is going to be crucial in getting around in this dungeon. The first level has a pool and I've already unlocked this place so you'll see that I already have the bridge built here. But if you're just starting out, you're definitely gonna need that watering can. The monsters in this dungeon are pretty tough. I do suggest the slime charmer ring and having a decent amount of food as well as a pretty good weapon. You'll find tiger slimes and magma sprites, magma sparks, lava lurks, hotheads. Watch out, they do explode. Magma duggies, spike traps, and dwarven sentries here. I even found a mushroom level with a false mushroom enemy in here too. These levels change every day, so you'll never have the same experience twice. There are often switches needed to open doors to the next level, and you'll want to keep an eye out for these nodes, which are gonna give you some cinder shards, a new crafting ingredient for the forge that we are forging onto. You can also get these as drops from the magma sprites and sparks as well. When you find a chest, be sure to open up. There can be some good stuff inside, as well as break open these containers. There's some goodies that are in there as well. Just be careful. You can often find a dwarven sentry in these too. And once you reach level five, you'll have a resting spot with a dwarven merchant and another pool to refill your watering can. Now the next few levels are a bit more difficult, but eventually you'll be able to make your way to the exit. Once we get to the 10th level, you'll have reached the summit of the volcano and it's time to celebrate. Now that we're up at the volcano top, you'll see the amazing Dwarvish Forge. Okay, let's go over all the things that we can do with this wonderful forge. First things first, let's mash a couple of rings together. So we can actually combo some of our rings so that we can combine them and have both buffs onto one ring. Like my slime charmer ring, I mix that with my burglar ring and have it into one combo ring. Or my napalm ring mixed with my iridium band, a fantastic combo. Now you cannot mash a blended ring with a non-blended ring or two of the same kind, but you can definitely mix and match a couple of really good combos. There are so many different combinations that you could do with this, so definitely play around with a few different ones to find what works for you and your play style. Each time that you combine two rings together, it's gonna cost you 20 cinder shards, so keep that in mind. And you can unforge the rings too if you change your mind or you wanna use one ring with a different ring. 
the next thing that we're gonna do with the forge is play around just a little bit with the appearance of our weapons. So much like with the tailoring system that was introduced into the 1.4 update, where you can move the stats of one boots to another, you can do the same thing at this forge here. So I personally love my galaxy sword, but it looks a little meh after a while. And I really like the look of this dark sword. So what you can do is put the dark sword in this slot and the galaxy sword in this slot and push this button. And it's going to move the stats from the galaxy sword over to the dark sword. Now it will eat up the cosmetic sword that you have, the dark sword. So if we ever decide to unforge it to get our galaxy sword back, we will not have our dark sword back. So keep that in mind. It is definitely fun to play with but you don't want to lose something that <laughs> you uh might regret later like the neptune's glaive and it only costs 10 cinder shards to do this now keep in mind this does only work on weapons of the same type so sword with sword hammer with hammer you can't be mixing a hammer with a shiv or anything with a slingshot actually so slingshots don't work in this at all all right now on to weapon forging some exciting stuff you can forge a melee weapon either a dagger hammer or sword up to three times to improve its stats that means that you can use three gems to upgrade different aspects of your weapons it's pretty cool all right so there are six different gems that have different stats that you can use to boost your weapon in forging and we're starting off with amethyst which adds more knockback to your weapon the aquamarine which adds more critical hit chances emerald adds more weapon speed i really like this one jade more critical hit damage ruby gives you more damage all around and the topaz, which adds more defense. You can only forge up to three times. And the first time you do, it'll take 10 cinder shards, then 15, and then 20. And you can use three of the same gem on one weapon in case you want like a really beefy hammer. Now, if you use a diamond, that's a special case. A diamond acts as a triple forger and it only costs 10 cinder shards. If you use a diamond, it will put random effects on whatever's left over. So if you use an amethyst first and then a diamond, it'll fill out two randoms. But if you just use a diamond, it'll fill out three. It might be fun and might be worth it if you're running kind of low on shards, but you can never be sure what you're gonna get with that. So here we have my galaxy sword with some random stats on it. Not too bad. I'm not minding that at all. And get this, that's not even the best part of this forge. There's the new enchantments as well, which is crazy. And I'm going to show you what we do with that now. Enchantments are going to add a random enchantment to any weapon or specific tool and it costs 20 cinder shards as well as one prismatic shard. So if you're going to need a lot of prismatic shards to get exactly what you want. If you haven't checked out my prismatic shard video and where to get them, be sure to check it out. I have linked that down in below because as you'll see in this video, I'm powering through a lot of them. I'm also going to be going over all the enchantments that you can get for your weapons and tools as well. There are five that you can get on weapons. Four of them are geared towards combat and that is the vampiric which is gives you a chance to regain some health on hit. Crusader, which gives you a 50% more damage to undead and shadows and also prevents mummies from reviving. What? So really what that means is that it kills mummies. Heck yeah. And bug killer oh, does double damage to bugs, but it allows you to kill the armored bugs in the mines. What? I'm pretty sure there's no other way to do that. And the last combat specific enchantment for your weapons, that is the artful enchantment. It has a 50% cooldown on special moves. And yeah, it's pretty good, especially if you use it with either a dagger or a hammer. 
And now I finally have something to do with that massive stack of prismatic shards that I got for that last video I made for y'all. Oh right, and there is also one more enchantment for your weapons, although it's not specifically for combat, it's more of a tool enchantment. It is called the Haymaker. And so it gives you a chance of getting hay while you're chopping weeds and also a chance of some extra fiber as well. When you cut that hay, it'll go directly into your silo, much like with the scythe. But it doesn't work on planted hay. All right, let's go over the tools that we can enchant. We can enchant pretty much all of them apart from like the copper pan, the return scepter, the scythe, and uh, the milk pail. I, I guess that's a tool. But you can enchant the hoe, the axe, the fishing rod, the pickaxe, and the watering can. All right, first up, let's look at the enchantments for the fishing rod. A few of them are pretty cool, but there is one that I definitely have my eye on for sure. Hopefully we get that. Now, I'm not sure if you say enchant a steel axe and then upgrade it to a gold axe if the enchantment stays. I'm gonna have to play around on a different playthrough and see if that works. I'll be sure to report back to you on that. But for the most part, I'm just gonna be using all of my iridium tools cause it's what I have on hand. And I know for sure a couple of these enchantments are only for iridium versions of their tools. All right, and we are starting off with the Iridium Fishing Rod, and my first enchantment that I'm going to get is... Preserving. Oh, cool. So it has a 50% chance that the bait and tackle aren't consumed when you use it. That is not too bad at all. Not the one I'm looking for, so we'll keep going. And next up we have Master. Oh, nice. It adds an extra fishing level to the player while held. So if we go ahead and check out my skills, I don't have any buffs on right now. You'll see that even though I maxed out on my fishing, I'm actually at 11 while holding this rod. The next enchantment we're going to get is Okay, so we're gonna have to roll around with these a little bit until we get something new. Oh, my poor sweet prismatic shards come on. Oh, oh, efficient. Now this um, enchantment works for all the tools that you can get. What it does, it makes it so that you use no stamina when you use your tools. So we could really go fishing all day long with this and never drain. But honestly, late game, I'm not really having so much of an energy issue, so I think we're gonna keep rolling until I get what I really want. Come on, come on, give me something good. Oh, oh yes, that's the one I wanted. This is auto hook. It is also only for the fishing rod. It automatically hooks fish when they bite. Um, let's go ahead and get out of this lava so I can show you how that works. Okay, heading over to my trusty farm pond. So what it does is even if I'm catching some trash, it's going to automatically hook it for me. So it's not gonna show me the alert or anything like that. Yes, I'm just going to stick that trash right in my pocket without even having to put up a fight with it. Now, if you do hook a fish, what it's going to do is you're actually going to automatically go into the fishing mini game without having to click on it once the alert pops up which is actually kind of nice, but you're gonna have to pay attention a little bit more. <laughs> but it's one less click you have to do on a very fishing heavy day for you. So that was four different enchantments that you could get for the fishing rod. Not too bad. Auto hook is definitely my favorite with master being a close second. All right, let's go on to the next tool and we're going to whip out my trusty wood chopping axe. And there are four enchantments that can go with the axe and let's go check them all out. And the first one we got is Swift. Ooh, it makes your tool use uh, much faster. Uh, I think that's pretty nice. Let's check this out. <laughs> Look at me go. Yeah, I, I think I kind of like this one a lot. Next up, now this one sounds pretty interesting. It's called shaving. So you get a chance of extra wood from trees, hardwood from stumps, and produce from giant crops. Let me show you what exactly this looks like. 
As you can see, I'm chopping uh, this uh, coconut tree and with every swing of the ax, an extra piece of wood comes off. Definitely gotta try this with a giant crop and it works the same with this mahogany tree. I mean, in the long run, you would definitely get a lot of extra good wood. <laughs> Okay, a lot, a lot more, a lot more wood. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next one. I, all right, before I move on to the next one, I am gonna check real quick and see what this looks like with these stumps. Oh yeah, a couple of pieces of hardwood are popping off and I have some giant crops on my farm. So I'm gonna test that on this. Ooh, actually, I think, I think I am too powerful, so I'm gonna enchant a copper ax real quick so I can show you exactly what it looks like. Use it on my cauliflower. And yeah, a cauliflower popped off right before I, of course, broke it. Ooh, powerful. Now that sounds pretty good. It is for both the ax and the pickaxe and it adds an extra power level. Now I'm going to go over to the secret woods and show you exactly what it looks like on a hardwood stump. One, two, poof, and that's it. Actually, um, that might be my favorite. I really like that one. Well, maybe, I really liked the shaving. That and the shaving for sure, but there is one more for the ax that we can get. So let me check that one out first before I decide. And it is efficient. Okay, so that's the same as before. Still no stamina drain with this enchantment. That means that you're gonna be going all night long chopping some wood with this. <laughs> In case, you know, you need to go deep forest, cinder snap forest or whatever it else it is that you're planning on doing with your wood axe in the middle of the night. <laughs> All right, and now on to the pickaxe. And this one has three enchantments that I'm aware of. Oh, it's just a little bit bummed. It doesn't have a pickaxe specific enchantment, just three that you can find on some of the other tools, at least that I know of so far. Yeah, it could be something in the files that I wasn't aware about, but we'll see. All right, so they're still pretty nice enchantments anyways, and pretty useful. First one up is powerful, which is fantastic. Gives you the extra power level. You'll be able to take those giant boulders out much faster. And next up we have swift, which is lovely. I do love this. Uh, let's check this out. <laughs> can do some damage with that. And third, let's see if I can get the third one right off the bat. Ah, powerful again. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and speed through until I get to the next one. And the last enchantment for the pickaxe is efficient. Enough said, no stamina drain. Really nice and solid enchantment for this one. Can be pickaxing all night long. All right, the next tool up is the Iridium Hoe. Now there are five enchantments that you can put on the Iridium Hoe, um, on any hoe actually, but one specific that has to be for the Iridium. And we will go over that when I do get that enchantment. All right, for the hoe, the first enchantment we got is Swift and we've gone over that one already before, so I won't repeat it. And this enchantment is called Generous. It is a hoe specific one. It gives you a 50% chance of double items after digging. Now this isn't talking about those artifact spots. This is talking about like everywhere else, be it the sand or in the mines, you'll get like double clay, double rocks or whatever it is that you are digging up in the dirt. All right, here's a good one. It is the archeologist enchantment. It is specifically for the hoe. It gives you a double chance of finding artifacts in artifact spots. So what that means is that while you're digging up artifact spots, instead of maybe finding clay or stone again, you have double the chances of finding an artifact, which is so great for finishing your museum. 
What do we have next? Ah, yes, reaching. Okay, so this is the one I was talking about where you have to have an iridium hoe for, not the other hose, because the iridium hoe is already upgraded to the max um, area capacity or area effect that it has. And so this bumps that up a little bit. So let me just show you. One, two, three. So you see this extra bigger square, which is a 25 square or a five by five. A standard iridium sprinkler size is what you're going to get with this hoe. Super fantastic. Now, let me see if I can get that last enchantment for the hoe. Ah, uh, yep, it is just efficient, you know, no stamina drain. Not too bad for hoeing, um, especially for the beginning of a new season. Now, my favorite hoe is probably the reaching one or honestly efficient. Both of them are really nice. And lastly, we have the watering can with one of uh, the more exciting enchantments to me. So there are three enchantments that you can get with the watering can. Uh, first one that we have is efficient. Uh, you know, it's not too bad. And next up, we also have reaching. So this is for, ir I believe, iridium watering can specific. It works just like with the iridium hoe, the same area of effect. And so being that the iridium watering can is already fully upgraded, that's why you can get the enchantment on that. Now, what I really want is the last one. And so I'm going to keep going until I get it so I can show it to you guys. Oh, yep, there it is. You can tell that I got the one I wanted by looking at the little water bar underneath the can. It is the bottomless watering can. It gives you infinite water. Oh, so exciting, especially with this new beach farm that we have and the ability to, or the inability to use the sprinklers. You're definitely gonna need a lot of water. So between that and efficient one or the other, man, I wish I could combo those. But I definitely think that the bottomless watering can is super helpful. Oh, and being that we have this magma mine too, where you're gonna need to use the watering can often, it's gonna be super helpful in there for you as well. Ah, so nice. I'm gonna splash water on like everything. Now this entire video, I would definitely classify as a big old spoiler, but this part right here, the last thing that we can do is the biggest spoiler of all. So be prepared. All right, so when you get to Ginger Island and you unlock the area where you can unlock your own little Ginger Island farm, you'll notice at the very western side of the beach there is this little door right here it is a secret room and once you collect 100 golden walnuts you can get inside and you'll find mr q or mr key or however you want to see it i say mr key but he has a special little room here with some quests that he wants you to do and you can get some pretty interesting, amazing end game items and craftables in here. But one of the things that you can get is actually called a galaxy soul. You're going to need um, three galaxy souls to get this new special weapon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have nine so I can show you all three of the special weapons too. What we're going to be doing is reforging the galaxy weapons. There's the galaxy sword, galaxy hammer, and the galaxy dagger. This is different than using gemstone forging or prismatic shard forging because you're using the galaxy souls and you're going to reforge them three times each or embed a galaxy soul into them three times. And after you do that, you're going to make a brand new weapon. Oh my gosh, look at this. There's the infinity blade, the infinity gavel from the hammer, and the infinity dagger. They look insanely cool. And look at these stats. Uh, like, 
it blows my mind. And now this is just their base stats without any forging or any enchantments added on them at all. So you can actually forge and enchant them even more to boost their stats. These are absolute beast mode weapons. And honestly, there is some late game baddies that you might want to take one of these up against with. <laughs> so definitely keep that in mind. If you don't really like the look of it, you can always do the um, weapon appearance swap with something else for sure. And these can be enchanted and uh, forged so you can all uh, boost their stats even more. But one thing's for sure, you will definitely be well protected with one of these. So it should definitely go without saying that the Stardew Valley wiki editors have been so hard at work since the 1.5 update came out. And one of the first things that I noticed that they filled out pretty pretty well is the page for the forge man they're doing such a great job you guys are killing it but if you are more of a reader and want to keep referencing all the information that's in this video i've went ahead and linked the forge page there um be sure to check it out excited about this forge and all the various different opportunities and cool things that we can do with it Plus, I always love having more things for my farms to work towards. Well, what about you guys? Have you discovered the forge on your own? And if you haven't, what are you planning on making first with it? What kind of ring combinations are you going to be playing with? And are you going to try to go get those infinity swords? I personally think that they're absolutely worth it, especially with those stats, but I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, I have a lot more videos coming out for this 1.5 update, like a full list of a ton of different things I'm working on. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you can know when my next one comes out. Be sure to like and share with a friend if they have any use for this information too. I love helping more people out too. I'm Wickedy. Thank you so much for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.